Hey, welcome to Taylor's Trick Taking Table. I'm Scott, not Taylor. So if this video elicits any negative reactions or emotions from you, blame me, Scott, not me, not Taylor. But I have Scott, a game for you today called Scott, I think. I sadly think it's a little bit scat, but we'll talk about that later. It's designed by Scott, <laughs> no, it's designed by Uncredited, prolific. I feel like every old game is designed by Uncredited. I don't know why. It's it's like they just discovered these games, who knows. Maybe people back then didn't want credit. I don't know if I'd want credit for this game either. Ooh, I'm being kind of mean off the jump. It's not that bad of a game. People love this game, by the way, so yikes. If you don't hear from me, Scott, after this video, uh, send help, because I don't know if I'm going to make it out alive. But I hope you like abstract games, because I'm going to be using them to explain why I might not like this game. Anyway, since we are on August in old games, and we're going to go back to the Jazz Club, because the Jazz Club is having scat night. So I thought it'd be, ugh, just so perfect. It's wonderful how the timing works like that, right? I make a video on the exact night that the Jazz Club has a scat night. Ugh, serendipity. So let's go to the club, and I'll tell you the hook of the game. Hey, how's it going? You want to come in here, huh? Yeah, could I get in? How old are you? Oh, about like 200. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, right this okay. way. Thanks. Alrighty. Wow, this is nice. I'm just in time. I don't think the scatting has started. Uh, oh, what am I having? Uh, you know, I did gin last time and it got a little out of hand. Can I just do a tonic? Can I just do the half, <laughs> the non-alcoholic half? Yeah, thanks. Awesome. Here we are. LaCroix, passion fruit. I'm holding it up like it's the cover of the game, but <laughs> so cheers. Ooh, that's pretty good. Yep, that is passionate. The hook to Scott is it's a three player game and players will be bidding on what they want to set Trump to, you know, either a certain suit or no Trump or whatever it may be. There's a lot of things you can kind of bid for in the game. And whoever wins that bid will then be against the other two players. So it's a 2v1 game after that. I'll do a quick teach with a family deck that I found to teach this game uh, that is a little bit tattered, if I'm being honest. But yeah, so let's go to the table and actually the scatting is about to start. So let's hear. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, let's go to a different table. Let's actually, let's go out back because this is, this is rough and I'll teach you how to play. Okay, here we are at a table at the back. There's the four LaCroix it took, the four takes it took to do the intro. Classic Taylor. So, as you can see, this isn't the bed that I'm sleeping on, but actually wonderful display of all the cards in the deck for Scott. So, <laughs> again, this is an old family deck. That's all I could find. And for some reason, the diamonds look like they've been through something very painful. But anyway, it's aces down to sevens in the four suits, so 32 cards. Before I go into actually how to play the game and the gameplay, I do want to say this is going to be super high level. The game is actually a little bit tough to teach. And I'm going to include down below a how to play Scott video that someone put together, which is going to be much better than what I'm going to do. So that, again, this is going to just be a super quick overview. So here we have the game set up for those three LaCroix players. Every player is going to get dealt 10 cards and there's going to be two set aside. So how the bidding will work is it'll kind of bounce back and forth between two players. One of those players is going to be left and then it's going to bounce back and forth between the last two players after one of the person's passes. Whoever wins is going to pick what Trump is or maybe there's no Trump or maybe only the Jacks are Trump because an important part of this game is, for the most part, the jacks are the strongest card in the game. There is something you can pick where the jacks go back down underneath the queen, and then it's aces high. There's no aces here, but you get the idea. But for the most part, jacks are the strongest in the game. So say the double LaCroix player won the bid. After that, they're gonna look at their hand and be like, hmm, what would be a good bid for Trump? Maybe they have three clubs. Maybe they pick that for Trump. So after they pick clubs as Trump, these club cards are going to now be Trump and are going to be part of the Trump suit. So the hand would be then rearranged like this with Jack's always strongest and then in descending order, their clubs. So it is a must follow game. So if 
this player would lead one of the trumps, it would be a must follow on trump, which I'll give that example after I'll show how it works with non trumps. So say they led a spade. So then the play would pass to the passion flute player. Again, the single can LaCroix are on a team and they're fighting against the double can LaCroix player. So looking at passion fruit's hand here, they must follow suit with a spade. So they can play either the nine or the eight. Maybe they play the nine and then coming to Lemoncello. So again, this jack isn't part of the spades. It is elevated to be one of the trump suit. So maybe they play this 10. So the person who played the highest will take the trick and lead to the next trick. So again, maybe this player here wants to play uh, trump for some reason. It is must follow on trump. So this player would have to follow suit in the trump. So they play one of these four cards. Maybe they don't want to get rid of the jack of clubs, which is stronger than the jack of spades because the jacks are also hierarchical. <laughs> so the jack of clubs is stronger than spades. Spades is stronger than hearts. Then hearts is stronger than diamonds. But again, that is minutia. So <laughs> since it's trump and it must fall on trump, they played a trump. Over here, this player could play a queen or the 10. Since their partner is winning it, they're going to put in a 10 because the cards have points on them, which I'll explain now. The only cards with points in Scott are these five cards. So the three face cards are worth a little bit less. So two for jacks, three for queens, four for kings. And then these two cards are higher. So 10 points for tens and 11 points for aces. So then the rest of the tricks will be played. So 10 tricks in all. And then at the very end, the player who was the declarer is gonna count all the tricks in their win pile, plus the two cards in the Scott, which was left over. And they're gonna calculate how many points they took. So they need to take 61 points or more to be able to win the hand. If they don't, they lose points. If they do, they make points. So that's the general hand-to-hand -hand flow. The scoring is pretty tough to teach. I think, again, if you really do wanna learn how to play the game well, check the How To Play video on that. They, they go into the intricacies of the scoring. I'm just gonna super generalize it. Essentially, you have multipliers for how many points you score. One of the multipliers is if you won or not. One of the multipliers is depending on which jacks you had in your hand or didn't have in your hand. One of the multipliers is how well you won. So if you just kind of wiped the board and took a ton of points, or if you took every trick, you would get even more multipliers, things like that. That's how to play roughly kind of ish things you can bid on. You can bid on the trump suit. You can bid where there's no trump suit besides the jacks, or you can bid on a null hand, meaning there's no trumps at all. And the jacks just go back to where they're at. So then it's just ace down to seven. And then you're playing where you don't want to win any tricks. So that is kind of ish, a little bit of the flow and vibe of how to play Scott. Again, check out the how to play video if you want more details. But for now, let's go talk about final thoughts. Alrighty, we're back inside. They've stopped the scatting, but sadly, I think the lighting is turning my face red. So sorry if I look like a, a red goblin the whole video. And, I, and I'm sorry for the teach. The teach wasn't the best. It's just... I think it's a little indicative of this game and kind of how I feel about it. It's just the teach is super, super rough. The scoring specifically is super, super rough. And I guess to lead off with the final thoughts with something positive, I don't want to always be such a, a negative Nelly or negative Scott. Again, Scott, not Taylor. Uh, the game has a ton of depth, especially with 32 cards. It's wild how much is packed, how much thought is packed into that game. It's, it's a crunchy game. A lot of card counting, honestly. A lot of intuiting what is in other people's hands. I love the fact that there's only two cards cut. There's a lot of perfect information, especially if the dealer takes in the cards that were cut. I think it's called the Scott into their hand. And then they kind of, obviously they don't know everything because cards can be split amongst the players, but they know exactly what pitfalls to watch out for. You know, like if they don't have the Jack of clubs after pulling up the Scott, then they know it's out there and they have to be wary of it, right? There's a fair amount of interplay that is interesting, the back and forth between the other players. And the 2v1 is really great. I really like games that do that. I've played Chimera, which has at three, a great 2v1. I think there's Landlord or something. There's different names, but I'm trying really not to go, really hard not to go into the negatives right away. Uh, <laughs> so I'll pull out that button. We're, we'll keep it PG, no buts. So back to what's good. I do like 
the fact that you can call null, it's always a cool contract where things can kind of twist on their head if you don't have the best hand for the game. It's always tough when games are always like win-win-win and they don't allow players the contracts to have the flexibility of a bad hand. I... Okay. I'm gonna just go into the negatives. I'm so sorry. I know there's a lot of people who like this game. One of the uh, people I play with, one of the people I play with a lot really likes this game. I'm just gonna dive into the negatives. So first off, the scoring. I think the scoring is a little goofball. Yes, there's logic to it. The fact that certain suits are just worth more or less. They inform the bidding for sure. So if someone's bidding higher and higher and higher, they probably either, you know, have a, have a grand or a null at a certain point, right? Or they have, you know, clubs as opposed to diamonds or hearts because you can cut off a little bit of what they're bidding just on, you know, what's impossible to bid, right? So that just feels arbitrary and goofy. And I don't like when games have just like a weird chart you have to memorize like, oh, hearts mean 10 and diamonds mean nine and or whatever it is. The whole with and without system, it's illogical. I'll go with that. If you had the multiplier of without being worth more than the multiplier of with, then it would make sense. So the system of with, right? A quick 20 second synopsis. In a nutshell, it's essentially how many jacks you have, the strongest cards, in your hand. So if you have a with one, you're with the one strongest jack. With two is you have the two strongest. With three, yada yada, you get it. So why is with four value the exact same as without four? You have a with four hand, which is a super strong hand, and you get even more points than having a with three or with two or with one, or blows my brain, withouts. Why are withouts valued the same as withs? What? If you do a without four, that's insane. You should be getting so many points. It doesn't make sense. Why is a with four worth more than a with two? And then what kills me, if there just happens to be a card in there, the Scott, a Jack, that messes with your bid, so you miss your bid because it changes because of what you draw into the hand, blows me away. You picked the harder thing. Why are you penalized for drawing what's in the Scott? That kills me. That seems so goofball XD random in a game that's supposed to be super, super serious and deep and, oh man, I'm gonna get destroyed for this. I'm sure there's reasons, there's totally reasons, but it, I should settle down. Whew, okay, I calmed down a little bit, just in time to get mad again. The bidding, I don't like the bidding. I'm sure there's something to be gained from having two people bid and you watch and then you bidding with the person who remains. I get that. Is it that much you get from it? Someone will probably tell me it is. I don't feel like it's too much information. Yes, you could be like, oh, that person went to that number. Maybe they kind of have this. But really, can we just bid the circle? I think you get just as much or maybe just different information if you bid in a circle. Whew. Look at me, super settled. So that is the things I don't quite like about the game. So the scoring, I think the incentive structure is weird. The Scott stuff that bounces around is bizarre. I think the scoring in and of itself is obtuse and the bidding is a little goofball on the goofball. Subjectively, I didn't grow up playing games with rank promotion. So, or when cards just bounce around, that was always like a little off-putting to me. I think if it's super simple, like in Kofir Yas, or Mittler Yas, or Somnia, and stuff like that, I can handle it. This one, I think, pushes it a little bit far. It's a little Doppelkoff for me, like another game that I'm not the biggest fan of. I hope that this analogy that I'm about to go into it helps give a little bit more insight of how I'm trying to position my argument. So, abstracts, right? I hope you like abstracts. Fingers crossed, because I'm going to talk about them a little bit. Abstracts are super useful to teach people who don't want to learn many rules, right? So you have games like Go, pretty simple, pretty cool. You have games from the gift series, like Czar or Yinch or whatever, where super simple. You can, you know, it's like a Two seconds, 2.5 seconds to master. <laughs> no, that's not easy. 2.5 seconds to learn, a lifetime to master, right? Those are the classic ideas of like an abstract. You have all those abstracts that are that are wonderful like that. Talk, oh my gosh, sensational. But then you get abstracts that have a little bit more rules, right? You get your photosynthesis, photos photosynthesis. You get your hives, right? So hives like, oh, that's a little goofball grasshopper that hops on top of that and 
That is an ant. Loves a run. Great game. Great games. I like photosynthesis as well. And then you get, I think, the spectrum to where Scott is. You get your chess. So with chess, you get all these goofball rules. En passe. Or the king in the castle do a little swifty do, a little castling move, right? You get that piece does that. Oh, pawns can move too if it's their first move. Yum, yum, yum. So you get into these rules that I personally think hurts a little bit of the elegance of a game, especially a card game that could be really simple and smooth. Or in this case, an abstract that can be super simple and smooth. You're looking at me, you're going, Taylor, whoa, chess isn't elegant? Again, contextually, compared to other abstracts, chess isn't the most elegant, I don't think so. Scott is chess, I don't like chess. I understand how deep it is. I get there's an ocean of complexity and nuance in the game. Why would I play chess when I'd rather have so much more enjoyment from a more cleaner, simpler, less rules, but still incredibly deep game like Go or Talk or Czar? That's kind of what I'm getting at. And I know there's so many people who like chess. They even made a show about it based on the game. And it did pretty well, I think. And then they made a game based on the show. Hmm. Yeah, take that. Phew, I should stop while I'm behind, really, <laughs> digging this hole that I've dug. Long story long, I think, I don't like Scott the same reason I don't like chess, which I've said before, but in summary, obtuse, I've said that a million times, hard to learn, difficult to remember. I tried to relearn this game for the video, and it was like going back to college and reading a textbook it was just woof but goof and honestly the battery died but honestly it's just not fun there's just a bit too much tracking and calculating and it's hard to kind of intuit off the bids really and the game kind of is just a little bit wacky and swings during the game that aren't the most fun i love complexity so it's not because the game's complex or things like i love vera which has the most in, like like look at these bidding charts they're insane you can bid you can bid i think 2000 different bids in that game i like vera i don't love it i really like it though cowbell oh my gosh a clean cleaner version of vera stupendous the bidding charts are nuts so but in that game what people bid you can intuit so much from it there's there's a lot of nuance in that game because there just is so much bidding or I like moo or mew i I, I love games that have a lot of, you know, agency or a lot of just depth to it. So it's definitely not that. I just don't think the amount of work you need to put in to Scott is yields enough out of it or enough fun. And again, this is super, super just subjective because obviously people love it. But it's the same thing like I don't really want to play chess anymore. Don't really want to play Scott anymore. I hope that helps. Again, me, Scott. If you don't see me after this video, please send help. I don't know if this is gonna go over well. I think the BGG ratings on this are like huge. It's like one of the highest trick takers and the comments are pretty, pretty high. So I apologize. I'll just say it. If you don't agree with this video, it is a parody. Thank you so much for watching my probably 30 minute long joke. I hope you laughed because it was really funny, especially the part where I said one of the number one trick taking games isn't good. Thanks. Thanks. Good night. Thank you so much. Good night. Hey, Scott here. Bonus clip. Me drinking all the LaCroix that were in the video. Whoops. Mmm. Yum yum for my tum tum. Thank you so much for watching and thanks to LaCroix for sponsoring the video. So again, if any of the opinions were bad, please email at Scott at LaCroix. Dot com and I'll make sure I'll make sure to respond. Thank you so much and have a good have a good one <sighs> What am I doing with my life? I am harshly criticizing Scott on the internet. I'm gonna get crucified